In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a full linear regression in Excel. That's slightly different to what we've been doing up until this point, which is just adding a linear trend line to a scatter plot and putting the equation on the graph. So this is, this is a bit more involved and there's a lot more information that's going to come out. I just wanted to show you that that linear trend line is actually doing something really sophisticated um, and it's not obvious there that it's doing a lot of statistical analysis underneath the hood um, and there's a lot more information you can actually get out of it um, including things like um, a p-value or the standard error or, and what we're going to do in line with this week's assignment or assessment I should say the test is we're going to calculate um, a value for the uncertainty in any of our predicted values. I've referred to that as the margin of error for our regression. Okay, so I've already got my data set. I've downloaded that. I've imported it into a clean sheet in Excel. Uh, I'm going to click anywhere on here. Then I'm going to select the data ribbon, which I've already done. And there's a data analysis button far over on the right here. On the right. If you haven't got that button, it means you need to uh, configure the analysis tool pack add-in. I've done that in a previous week, so go back and figure out how to do that. Um, I'm going to select regression and click OK. And it should, provided I've clicked on the table beforehand, it should have a go at populating all of the fields here. Um, my Y range here is my B column, including the header, and my X range is my A column. So just just to discuss this data set slightly, I've measured a sunflower on a daily basis, how much it's grown in millimetres. And I've also recorded the number of hours of direct sunlight that that sunflower has received on that day. So B is my what we call dependent variable. And A is my independent variable. B depends on A. Okay. Right. I'm going to select everything else here. It's going to give me a load of information. I'm not going to go through it all in this video. I've left a lot of information in the book on how to interpret the regression. The rest of this video now is going to be on answering the question in the test on how to calculate the margin of error for my regression. OK, so all of that information, beautiful information is going to be left to you to interpret because I don't want to make this video super long. I want to calculate the margin of error for my regression. So that means that anytime I calculate a, a predicted value from, for example, if I want to predict, predict my growth for five hours of direct sunlight, I could do that using these coefficients here. This, these, these values in this table here, the third table down, the one next to hours direct sunlight per day is essentially your gradient of your linear fit and your intercept there is above it. Uh, just to show what's going on here, there's a graph here which shows you the linear plot. Okay, so in this case, your blue values are your data and your orange values are your predicted fit from the linear regression. Okay, right, I'm going to calculate my margin of error using my standard error, which is a measure of the average spread of the differences between my predicted and observed values, okay, or residuals we call them. And I'm going to multiply that by a weird number called the T number, which isn't in this table at all, actually. It's, uh, it's a number drawn from what's called a student's T distribution. The fact that it's called a student's uh, distribution and that you are a student is a bit of a coincidence. Um, really, it's a way of generalizing our standard normal distribution. I don't really want to go into too much detail there because that's a real rabbit hole. You're going to have to trust me for now. To calculate the T value that I need, I need to consider two things. I need to know my alpha value, which in this case is 0 0.05. That's the threshold over which I determine things to be significant or not significant statistically. And I also need to know the number of degrees of freedom in my data. So in this case, for um, a linear regression, a sing what we call a single factor, because I'm only looking at um, the impact of the hours of sunlight, single factor, um, I can calculate my degrees of freedom by looking at the number of observations, okay, 
and subtracting 1, okay, and then also subtracting the number of dependent variables. So that's going to be 24 minus 1 minus 1. So um, that is actually identified here confusingly as this residual df, which is 22. Okay, so my degrees of freedom in this data set is 24 minus 1 minus another one because that's the number of independent variables I'm looking at. So let's just calculate the t value here. To do that in Excel, I'm going to go equals t dot inv dot 2t. Uh, now, what this is referring to is a two-tailed inverse of the student's t distribution. Um, so I really don't want to unpack that any further. Just put that in as it is. It's going to take two parameters. One is the probability, which in this case is 0 0.05, and the degrees of freedom, which is 22. Okay. And there you go. I've got a t value of 2.073873. So to calculate my margin of error, I'm going to take this value, oops, equals, click on that, times by my standard error. Okay, so my standard error is 2.4. The units of this are in millimeters. Okay, so anytime I quote a predicted growth, so for example, if I were to um, observe, uh, let's say, 10 hours of sunlight and predict that it was going to grow 10 millimeters, it would be 10 plus or minus 2.40 millimeters. That's how I would use that margin of error in my expressed value. Right, there's a lot more information in this week's chapter on how to interpret these tables, but probably too much for a short video. I've already talked for about seven minutes, I think. So I will hopefully, um, hopefully I've done enough here to let you answer this week's question. Any questions, make sure you ask in the workshop chat.